Before entering the stadium at the ancient Greek Olympics, athletes were required to pass by a row of statues known as the Zanes. Paid for by athletes who had been caught cheating, these statues were inscribed for the ages, with the names and misdeeds of those who broke the rules for all to see. Throughout human history, cheating has been an indelible part of sports. Professional sports are an extreme environment where success or failure can be decided by hundredths of a second. A win can turn you into a cultural icon, while failure can leave you injured, broke and unemployable. It's only natural that people act in extreme ways when the stakes are so high. Performance enhancing substances have likewise been intertwined with sports since the dawn of time, with many athletes using anything that can help them gain an edge. A group of Olympic athletes were surveyed and asked whether they would choose to win a gold medal and die within 10 years, or have a normal lifespan minus the win. An astonishing 80% of the athletes responded that they would prefer to win the gold medal. 15 years since its release, the documentary Bigger, Stronger, Faster has become an increasingly relevant and revealing expose of the hypocrisy, lies and contradictions associated with drug use in sports and society. In the early 2000s, PEDs were a much more taboo subject than they are today. Bigger, Faster, Stronger not only lifts the veil of secrecy in exploring the misconceptions and lies associated with steroids, but it also exposes them as a symptom and metaphor of a far greater problem. The film questions society's love-hate relationship with superhuman performance and the chemical means used to achieve it. While it's commonly believed that PED use has always been vilified, Doping was once an expected part of sports and considered the hallmark of a committed professional. Bigger, Faster, Stronger is also a targeted social commentary and a personal journey through America's obsession with victory and its hyper-competitive cultural race, where winning isn't just everything, it's the only thing. Through the lens of personal experience, writer, director and narrator Chris Bell highlights the complex moral dilemma inherent in the pursuit of the modern day American dream. Bell and his brothers grew up idolizing figures like Hulk Hogan, Sylvester Stallone, and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Icons who epitomized the ideals of masculine success through hard work, determination, and virtuous living. Following in their footsteps, the Bell brothers worked out, took their vitamins, said their prayers, and believed that pursuing muscles would be the answer to all their aspirations. Despite following the rules, however, the Bell Brothers found that the American dream didn't deliver. Bell probes the undisclosed, dirty little secret of PEDs that played a large part in the deceptive success stories of their icons, posing the question, when you discover that your heroes have broken all the rules, do you follow the rules or do you follow your heroes? The film navigates the complex web of relationships that underlie the connections beyond the issue of steroid use exposing the moral ambiguity and the dark side of the win at all cost pressure to succeed, or as Bell states in the film's asterisk title, the side effect of being American. Putting a human face on the topic, Bell turns the camera on his quintessential American working class family, which serves as both a relatable backdrop and a microcosm of the events portrayed in the larger cultural landscape. The Bell brothers grappling with childhood feelings of inadequacy along with a genetic tendency towards obesity, look to sports as a means of escape and achievement. Mike, aka Mad Dog, overweight and bullied as a kid, becomes the captain of the high school football team. In college, he realizes he's more underdog than big dog and begins using steroids to climb the competitive ranks. Motivated by insecurity and a desire to transcend his mundane suburban existence, Mad Dog later pursues a career in wrestling. Putting aside a dubious resume working bit parts as the scripted loser for the real talent of the wrestling pros, Mike nevertheless envisions all-consuming dreams of manifest destiny, bordering on the desperate and messianic. It's an unrealized grandiosity that leads Mike to feelings of despair, compounded by a spiraling prescription drug addiction. Mark, the youngest brother, is a former wrestler turned competitive powerlifter who also uses PEDs to fulfill his personal mission to be as big and strong as humanly possible. Although he enjoys the grounding of family life and coaching high school football, Mark struggles with the ethical bind of lying to his wife 
the kids he coaches, and the lies he tells himself, all in a resolute justification for taking drugs. Chris is the Oreo filling caught in between the bluster of this brotherly beefcake biscuit. Conflicted by the moral implications of the steroid use he witnesses and even briefly experiments with, he questions whether his family are really the bad guys in this questionable moral equation. In stark contrast to their three boys, Chris's parents, Sheldon and Rosemary, are content with their mundane suburban normality. They despair at their son's PED use, quoting scripture and offering well-meaning, but ultimately unconvincing advice in an impotent attempt to reach their headstrong progeny. Key scenes such as the mum's inquiry as to why her boys felt they needed to take steroids to measure up, and the father's prediction of Mike's imminent demise, serve to underscore the complex and nuanced human issues at play central to the story. But in spite of their opposition to their son's steroid use, both parents are seated front and centre, beaming with pride as Mark succeeds in his drug-assisted powerlifting meet. It's an ironic twist supporting the film's central thesis. The Bell family reflects a society complicit in celebrating bigger, faster, stronger sporting achievements, while collectively shrugging their shoulders at the ethical hypocrisy and excoriation of the methods used to achieve them. Bell's America is a nation that defines itself in the superlative, a society metaphorically on steroids. The culture hates a loser. Nice guys finish last. If you don't cheat, you're not trying hard enough. In America, Bell notes, as long as you don't get caught, cheaters always prosper. A hyper-competitive culture like America's demands winners in school, business, politics and sport. So it's no surprise that breaking the rules offers a tempting calculus in this high-stakes game of life. Adopting the belief that everyone's doing it normalizes the mindset behind the enormous incentives to shortcut a system when following the official rules puts you at a disadvantage compared to those who cheat, playing by an unwritten set of quote unquote real rules. Bell interrogates why personal ambition has metastasized into a cultural need for victory and why performance enhancing drugs have become the convenient scapegoat for this broken value system. Repackaged for easy consumption, it's a simplistic good versus evil, heroes versus villains dichotomy, constructed around a framework that PED use is morally wrong, physically destructive, and an affront to those athletes doing the right thing. Only morally degenerate athletes cheat to win. Get rid of the cheaters and the sport settles back into a mythic utopia of pure fair play is the common misguided refrain from the anti-doping crusaders. It's a narrative reinforcing the complicity of fans, athletes, governments, sport organizing bodies, and advertisers who decry the scourge of cheating on one hand, yet financially support the systems which facilitate it on the other. The downfall of athletes like Lance Armstrong, Ben Johnson, and Barry Bonds offer gratifying social lessons laced with prodigious amounts of schadenfreude validating our own moral superiority. Yet all of this flies in the face that drug-free play is a relatively modern moral precept forced upon sports whose participants have always used and pursued chemical enhancement. I open this analysis with a story of the ancient Greeks hardcore approach to cheating athletes. Yet ironically, the ancient Greeks were prodigious users of performance enhancing substances to achieve personal excellence in competition and found absolutely nothing wrong with it. Similarly, the Greek word pharmakon, in which our modern day words pharmacy and pharmaceuticals derives from, referred to the duality of anything that can be both helpful or harmful to an individual, depending on the dose. A description for something such as PEDs or even exercise itself. The related Greek word pharmakos was a person or animal ritually designated as the sacrificial scapegoat for a community's sins or illnesses. Coincidentally similar to how modern day PEDs and athletes are used as the culture's official proxy scapegoats for their collective hypocrisy. Thank you for watching part one of my analysis on Bigger Stronger Faster. In the next video I'll explore further issues in the film including a deeper dive into the history of PED use in sports. 
If you wish to support my work, please like, subscribe and leave a comment for the algorithm and visit the links in the description. Thanks again.